Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for watching, tuning in, coming back, whatever you call it. I appreciate it very much and hope you have an awesome day. Um, today I'm going to talk about taking one photo and creating multiple outcomes or multiple edits of the photo. So if you saw my last video, which is there, yeah, it's always on my left. I should know this by now. I don't know why. I can't get that in my dang head. Anyway, if you looked at my last video, um, I talked about how you can take a photo and create a virtual copy. It's not really a virtual copy, it's an actual physical copy, but uh, it allows you to overcome that sort of missing feature in Luminar 3, which you probably do have um, or use in Lightroom if you have Lightroom. So anyway, um, I took a, uh, a folder, I created a folder on my desktop, put a photo in it, and made three duplicates, and here it is. So it's just a photo from Venice, and uh, there's the uh, original and three copies or whatever, right? So uh, actually this is the copy. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna jump into uh, this photo. I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna leave that one there. I'm gonna pop over to the next one. So you can just jump uh, with your arrow key, right, uh, right arrow key to move to the next photo. And I'm gonna run through three quick edits of this photo. And all I'm really doing is showing the power and flexibility of Luminar. Uh, and you know, sometimes I do this just to kind of test myself to see what I can come up with. And to be clear, it's not about how fast you can edit a photo. I'm not sitting here saying and advocating, hey, you really need to hurry up and just motor through your edits. That's not the case. It's just about having fun in Luminar and experimenting. And I'm pretty much all about having fun in Luminar and experimenting. So let's go. Uh, okay, first one, I'm gonna go develop filter. I'm gonna do saturation and vibrance, uh, maybe some brilliance and warmth, and maybe a little golden hour. Uh, this is gonna be a full color edit. So. What I'm gonna find difficult to do is continue talking to you about what I'm doing while I'm doing it because I'm kind of motoring, as I said, and you know what, I forgot the tone filter, so let me go get tone because I need some smart tone in my life. I love smart tone, hello. Uh, don't need to open my emails. Okay, close the filter catalog. See what I mean, it's kind of hard to talk to you and uh, do this at the same time, but um, the point is I'm just trying to make a couple, not a couple, I'm gonna try to make three different edits that are credible edits um, without, um, you know, spending a whole lot of time on it. So there's one, right? So here's the first one. Let me show you. Boom, boom. Now I'm going to click to the next one and I'm into a different uh, photo now. The workspace is going to reset and I'm going to go for a black and white this time. I'm going to go tone and I'm going to say black and white. So let me just get back up here to develop. I'm going to lift the exposure. I'm going to add some clarity, bump the shadows, add some smart tone as before. And, and then sometimes, you know, even though I've added contrast in the develop filter, and this is a JPEG, so it's just develop filter, not uh, raw develop. Um, even though I'll, I'll add contrast there, when I add tone or black and white conversion, I might do contrast there too. I don't know that it actually has a difference in terms of how it impacts the photo. Sometimes I just, as I moved on to enough, another filter, and if it has contrast and I feel like some contrast is needed, I'll add it there. Same with highlights and shadows. So there's not any real, um, reason uh, that I that I do it that way. It's just something I kind of do. So um, I'm going to go back up here to Smart Tone, raise that a little bit. And while I'm there, maybe take down some of the highlights. And, you know, I think that's a, a credible uh, edit. There's the before, there's the after. So that's two, and we're on to number three. We are rocking, and this is fun. In this case, I'm going to cheat. Uh, you know, cheat. I'm going to get a uh, one of my presets. So uh, what's it going to be? It's not going to be that. It's going to be in my... London Calling preset pack. I'm gonna go with this uh, Cheeky Monkey. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I make these names up. Tried to sound English because it was London Calling. Uh, a cool looking edit, totally uh, different I think than the other one. However, I'm really gonna make it different because in this case, I'm gonna add a texture. I'm gonna say texture overlay. I'm gonna go grab one of the textures from my texture pack. I'm gonna get this grungy wall because that just seems to kind of fit with Venice for me. Uh, I'm going to take that opacity way down, and here's something I don't do very much, but I'm going to change the blend mode. So you can just go into the texture uh, overlay where it says texture overlay, right? So let me go back. Uh, right there on the filter, it says texture overlay, and then come down here to blend, and you can just pick these uh, different options, right? And you can kind of scroll through them, like overlay is a very hard one, a lighten is a pretty light one, screen's a pretty light one. I like this luminosity. I think that looks pretty cool. I'm going to go with that. I'm again going to lower the opacity of that uh, texture because I don't want to overdo it there. But I think with textures, you know, you can kind of go heavy, but I don't want to go too heavy handed because the photo is a long exposure, so it's kind of blurred. 
so it's not as crisp and so it's going to lose a little bit of that impact if the texture is too heavy uh, in terms of its opacity right so I got a pretty low 19 I might even go to like 15 or something you know something like that I just want to give it a little bit of texture a little bit of something else um, and uh, that's it really so uh, there we go let me go back up to this folder and you can see I've got three different edits so now I've got this one here's my original and uh, that's the color edit and then here's my black and white and there's my textured one so actually I think I like the colors on the texture one better than I do on the uh, on the color one but part of that is because I was just hauling ass now that I've got it uh, I might add some cross processing I'm going back because I do this all the time I might add a little Seattle adds a little bit of that pink tint yeah now we're now we're getting somewhere uh, I like that a little bit better I think I'll raise the smart tone a little bit just to brighten that foreground and I might even add some structure uh, just to smooth it out even further. So I'm going to go structure, but I'm going to go negative. And I'm just going to wipe that across the entire photo and boost a little bit. So the whole thing gets a little bit blurred, uh, but that's kind of the look I like in this case. And here we go. So three photos, uh, three outcomes. And now I kind of want a little bit more color over here. This is what happens, people. I start editing photos, and I just kind of decide I want to keep editing. So I'm going to add a little bit of warmth and a little bit of that purple tint. I just like that purple tint. I'm going to add a little bit of vividness. Um, and I, I think you can get away with overly saturated colors when you have a texture because sort of to me, like by definition, when a texture is on a photo, it's already not real, right? It's, it's entering the realm of like fine art or whatever. And I did a video about fine art if you want to check that out. But a texture doesn't mean it's fine art, but to me it kind of it's definitely entering the art realm. You're saying, this isn't reality. I'm sticking stuff on the photo, and I'm making it look different. I'm making it into an art piece, whatever. So to me, you can do more saturated and over-the-top colors on a uh, textured photo, and it, it you can sort of sell that. Uh, and I don't mean physically sell it. You actually can physically sell it, but I mean sell the idea, right? Uh, whereas uh, if you oversaturate a non-textured image, like a regular photo, People may look at it and say, ah, that's a little too saturated. But on a textured photo, I think people say, that's art, right? So anyway, there it is. Um, that was really the extent of this uh, video. I took the original. I made three copies real quick. I made a color version. I made a black and white version. I made a textured version. I like them all. But the point is, again, not to hurry through it. I'm not trying to tell you that you got to motor through your edits. I'm just saying there's a lot you can do. It's fun to sort of set a timer. Maybe set a timer for yourself. Get your iPhone out. Set the timer. Android if you have it. Um, uh, not picking on uh, Android people. I don't want to leave you out. We're all, we're all friends here. doesn't matter what you have. But the point is you have a stopwatch on your phone. Maybe time yourself. Say, hey, I'm going to give myself five minutes and see what I can do. And just play around. I like to, it's like speed dating the filters a little bit and learning how to use the product and it just gets you deeper more rapidly and I think that helps your, you build your sort of knowledge bench or your knowledge base that you can use to apply when you're actually seriously editing a photo at a later date because we're not trying to time it, we're not trying to make you hurry. Anyway, that's it for this one. I was just kind of having fun. I thought it'd be interesting to take one photo and create th three different versions of it and then I added the uh, sort of the extra layer of like doing it quickly instead of just plodding through or previously editing them and just saying here's what I did so hope it helps uh, let me know if you have any questions like subscribe hit that bell too don't forget to do that so you're always notified when I post new videos share with your friends and uh, let me know your thoughts in a comment down below and that's it my friends thanks for watching hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are take care see you soon and adios